freshly ground black pepper. Hey everyone, I'm Sab and this is Lagom Eats. Today we're going to be making beer braised short rib. We're gonna cook these short ribs low and slow so they're super tender and then finish them off in a rich and creamy sauce. Let's take a look at the ingredients. We're gonna need four pounds of short rib, one yellow onion, two stalks of celery, one large carrot, a jalapeno, one bay leaf, five sprigs of thyme, four cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of brown sugar, one tablespoon of flour, three cups of beef stock, 12 ounces of beer, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of canola oil, and salt and pepper. Let's get cooking. So first thing we gotta do is we're going to season our short ribs. So we'll liberally sprinkle salt all over these. Make sure you get all sides of them. And we're gonna season them in some freshly ground black pepper. These peppercorns are stuck in here. There we go. And get all sides of these as well. We're gonna set these aside, let them come up to room temperature for at least 30 minutes so our meat will cook more evenly. Now we're gonna chop our veggies and we are actually going to be straining all the solids out of this sauce at the end. So your veggies don't need to be chopped in any specific way. Just get kind of smallish pieces so they can um, go evenly in the broth and flavor that broth evenly. I'm just gonna do like a, just a rough dice. Let's chop our celery. Let's chop off the top end, the bottom. And again, just a rough chop is totally fine. Now we can just transfer all these veggies onto one plate because they're all gonna go in at the same time. I already peeled the carrot, so again, just Rough chop. Want some carrot? Oh, Chance wants some carrot. You guys can sit. Oh, Chauncey's sitting. Good job. Great. Come on. Thank you. There you go. All right, now our garlic, and we can just roughly chop this. Doesn't have to be a fine mince. And lastly, our jalapeno. Again, rough chop, totally fine on this. And you can take out the seeds if you don't want it as spicy, but I like to keep the seeds in. All right, we're ready to sear our meat. So we're gonna turn on our stove to about medium high and let the pan heat up. We're gonna add in a couple tablespoons of canola oil. You wanna use an oil with a high smoke point here. Don't use olive oil. It'll start smoking before it reaches the temperature that we want to sear our meat. All right, our oil is hot. Let's add our meat. Let that sizzle, what we want. So when you're making any kind of soup, stew, short ribs like this, you always want to sear your meat and sear your veggies. Don't just add them in raw. Searing them really just creates this depth of flavor. Your, your soup, your stew, your short ribs, whatever you're making is going to be way more flavorful than if you just add them in raw. You may need to do this in batches too. So don't worry if they all don't fit. Just sear these ones and then you can finish off with the rest. All right, we're gonna sear them for about two to three minutes per side until they're nice and golden brown on the outside. All right, let's flip them. Look at that nice golden brown color on there. That's what you want. We're gonna get all sides of this now. All right, they are seared on all sides, so let's go ahead and remove them. We'll just set them aside on a plate. All right, we're gonna finish off this last one. All right, our short ribs are seared. We're going to do our veggies now. So we'll just dump all these in. All 
And like I said, this is going to create a nice flavor when you sear your veggies instead of adding them raw. So we'll let them saute for a few minutes until they're just, just like softened. All right, our veggies have been sauteing for about five minutes and they're softened now. So we're going to add in our flour. This is gonna help thicken our sauce. We've got about a tablespoon there. We'll mix it in. And you wanna cook this for about a minute so that raw flour can cook off. So what you always wanna do is deglaze the pan. When you sear meat and veggies, there's gonna get a lot of that stuck on bits. It's called fond. And that's all the flavor in our sauce. So we're gonna deglaze our pan with our beer here. So we'll just pour it in. See how it bubbles up like that. And then you wanna scrape the bottom of the pan and get all those stuck on bits up into your sauce. Now that we've deglazed the pan, we're just gonna add in the rest of the ingredients. So we'll pour in our three cups of our beef stock. Our tablespoon of brown sugar, our thyme, and our bay leaf. We'll go ahead and mix it up just a little bit. And we want to bring this up to a simmer. All right, it's simmering and it smells amazing. You can really smell that thyme and garlic. So we're going to add in our short ribs now. Put them in. And you don't want them completely submerged into the liquid. You do want them just sticking out just a little bit. We're not trying to poach the short rib, we're just braising them. All right, now we've got our oven on to 300 degrees behind us. We're gonna cover these with a lid and we're going to put these in the oven for three hours until the meat is super tender. All right, our short ribs have been in the oven for three hours so they're super tender, almost falling off the bone. So now we've gotta thicken our sauce so we'll remove all our short ribs. Be careful. Now at this point, you can take them off the bone and remove that membrane that holds them onto the bone. And then um, you can serve them like that. How I like to serve them is on the bone because I think it looks really cool. But of course, remind your guests that there is that chewy membrane that they don't want to eat. So now, like I said in the beginning, we're going to strain our sauce. So we want to get out all those carrots and celery and all of that and just have the creamy sauce. So I'm gonna use my fine mesh sieve and we're gonna strain it. So our sauce is strained and at this point there's two things you can do. If you don't wanna eat this now, all you have to do is add the short ribs back into the sauce, refrigerate it. The next day all this fat is gonna be at the top, scrape out off the top and then continue with the recipe. We're gonna eat these tonight so I'm gonna continue with the recipe now. But as you can see, there's a lot of fat on top in this sauce because short ribs are really fatty. So we wanna make sure we get this off. So we don't want all that fat in our sauce. So we're going to skim it off. So just kind of tilt the bowl, take a spoon and skim as much of the fat off as you can. It's a lot easier when it's refrigerated and the fat is solidified. That's why this is a great make ahead dish. And actually when this dish has more time to rest, the flavors meld and get to know each other and further develop. All right, so now we're going to pour it back into our pot and we'll reduce this up. Turn on our stove to like medium. Okay, it's back up to a simmer. We're gonna stir through one teaspoon of mustard. And now we're gonna continue to let this simmer until it thickens. So our sauce has reduced and the way that you know is when you drag the spoon through, it leaves a trail. Or if you take like a metal spoon, dip it in and it coats the back of the spoon. So let's try this and see if we need to add any salt and pepper. Mm, that's really good. It actually does not need anything perfect the way it is. So let's turn this down a little bit. We're gonna add our short rib back in just to heat them through again. 
All right, I've got some brown butter mashed potatoes. I use the leftover brown butter from my brown butter peach pound cake. Any kind of potato will go amazing with this short rib. All right, let's plate it up. Then it on top. All right, and we'll pour this delicious sauce all over it. Oh my gosh, it'd be amazing. Let's garnish with a little bit of chives, just to give it a nice green pop. All right, let's have a bite. All right, let's see. Let's see how tender this is. All right, let's see how tender. It just falls right apart. Oh my gosh, super tender. Get some of this mashed potatoes and sauce. A big bite. Mm. The short ribs just fall apart in your mouth, and that sauce is so creamy, a little spicy from the jalapeno, and just full of flavor. This with a glass of red wine and some family and friends, perfect meal. I hope you guys enjoyed my beer braised short rib. The full recipe can be found on my food blog at lagameats.com. I've got new delicious dishes coming out every week, so hit a like and subscribe below. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, Dove.